And of course, you do realize you jumped into God's plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got and you know what? We felt that. I mean, the blessings were just coming. We got a new car. We moved into a house. I mean, it was like, God, mm -hmm. we're like, okay, God, we're going to honor you and we're going to follow through and get married. Mm -hmm. And he showed up and showed out the first year. <laughs> hey, God. <laughs> One, yeah. two, three, four, hit it. Time out for Barry. We are one. Excited today because yeah. wait a minute, who are we first? Oh, you I'm, always forget. <laughs> I'm Susan. And I'm Ralph Ridley, and we are one okay. flesh in my flesh and, and bone of my bone. bone. And we, I'm excited because we've got special guests today and yes. uh, a younger couple. And uh, you know, we have older and we have younger, but today we have a young couple, and I'm so excited. Yes. So, um, we're excited to be here. Okay, oh, great. well, let us tell you who you are. Uh, who are you? I am Jasmine. And I'm Duran. Okay. What's and your last, last name? name? Dixon. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, y'all. <laughs> and what, what, wait a minute. How long have you guys been married? <laughs> um, it was a year in October, so we're like a year and a half. Wait a minute. How did y'all meet? <laughs> Well, we actually, we actually met on the internet and then internet. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> we met on Twitter, which a lot of people don't know. Twitter? Mm hmm. We were having a conversation about a new movie that was coming out on mm -hmm. Twitter. But wait a minute, who saw who first? Well, I originally uh, was talking about the movie and then she had commented on the movie saying that it was a good movie. So after that, we started talking a little more and then. Um, Eventually, we ended up going on a date. And to the movies. <laughs> we went to the movies uh -huh. for our first date. So, was that the first time you saw each other, or had mm -hmm. you sent pictures? Yeah, we did. We were, like, texting, you know. Okay. And you saw how pretty she was, and you saw how pretty <laughs> was. Okay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And so that just led into Yeah, that. then um, we were freshly graduated from high school, going into college. Mm -hmm. I had a few options of what college I was going to. He knew he was going to a certain school already, and the school he was going to was one of my options. Mm -hmm. So I ended up, I'm not going to say I followed him, but <laughs> we ended up going to the same school, the same college. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it was history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of it ended up happening organically. We really, never really planned for like it to transpire the way it did. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So it was a good thing. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It was a great thing. <laughs> it was a great. I love thing. that. It was a great, great thing. thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, now, um, you had. Uh, we ask everyone, and we've been doing this. What did you bring to the marriage table? Mm -hmm. Was it? challenge uh, are you still working on it how'd you work it out and whatever and um we'll start with Duran. Um, oh. his, well you don't have to go first but i'll say yours first his <laughs> was identifying emotions oh. and uh miss jasmine's was control issues <laughs> so who wants to start first uh, yeah, so basically, um, this is something I've always had to navigate, um, but going into a marriage, I didn't know how important it was until it started presenting itself. Okay. So naturally, I had to really adapt and, you know, face the difficulties of actually identifying my emotions. Okay, so now you said, so at the beginning, you kind of knew that this was something that you'd always... Tell me a little bit about that. How did that come about? Um, well, was it from childhood? Or? Yeah, it started at my childhood. I was kind of low maintenance, so I really never really had to express myself uh, outwardly as much. But then in a marriage, you're kind of like 
in each other's face all the time. So you have to, you know, Amen. be vulnerable, have to be more open and present like what's going on with you in your everyday life. Yeah. And she was the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you realize this is what it was? I mean, what point did you really feel that this is was you were going through? Uh, because at a certain point, I realized I wasn't really being vulnerable as I should be with my partner. Oh, okay. And this made you feel right because when you know you're the one that's constantly expressing your needs, your wants, how I feel, how I don't feel, and the other person. I always, for a long time, was like, he's just full maintenance. Like he. It doesn't take a lot to please him. It doesn't take mm-hmm. a lot to make him mad. But I think ultimately what it really was, was he was really just suppressing how he was feeling. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really realize it until later in our relationship when we actually got married. We lived together. We mm-hmm. had a kid. And that stuff came up. So we've really been working like the past year to just have more of an open line of communication, really. Mm-hmm. Just to be able to be more vulnerable, like he said, and just be able to talk through the emotions and kind of figure out okay like why are you feeling like this was this from childhood is this something new so do y'all actually say that to each other yeah uh, yeah that's good because um how did you feel with her bombarding <laughs> uh, it felt apprehensive at first but then it felt more transparent for me mm-hmm. being that i had to be more open to her but do you feel safe and sharing what you really were feeling. Yeah, um, because after a while, I realized I don't really have that source of support to where I can just be transparent with my emotions. So that's good. So um, now let's, uh, we'll go back and forth. So (laughs) (laughs) my turn. Uh, Control issues. Okay, Uh, that's a big one. I feel like I've always kind of struggled with control issues, Mm -hmm. but I think, because I was a big sister, my brothers, that was really where I kind of started. And I kind of just carried it on and on and on. And it wasn't a lot of people in my life who really had an issue with it because they didn't mind me having to do everything. You know, they're so just like, Jazz don't handle it. There was how many in your family? <laughs> there are a total of six siblings. And so I am one of six. I have five siblings. So the older boys? Mm-hmm. Did you control them? Did you find that with them or was it with the younger siblings? I do feel like it was with the younger siblings. There's just like an age gap between us. There's mm-hmm. the older siblings and then it was like a 12 year age gap. Mm-hmm. And then it was me and the twins. I have twin brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't really until like he said, when you're living with somebody and you are sharing a space with them where certain issues really just, you're like faced with it and you don't have a choice but to really deal with it. Um, but yeah, I think it is something I always kind of struggle with. I feel like now is really when I've been trying to work on it and just kind of realize that like, you can't have control over everything. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to let up sometimes. Mm -hmm. If there's people around you that want to help and Mm -hmm. have an opinion or think there's a way to do something, it's okay to, to let them do that. It's okay to let him do that. I'm just curious, did you ever shut down and not communicate with each other because of yeah. the differences? Uh, right? Yeah, that's more so one of my go-tos for not being like open. So I have had to learn to more so embrace it than to run away from it or just pull yeah. back all together. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, this man here, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he was the type that he just shut down. He didn't say nothing because he wasn't going to argue. Yeah. Okay. So... Not saying anything at all was quite frustrating for me because right. I didn't want mm-hmm. your life. Yeah. And so by not saying anything, it caused me to even demonstrate more. Well, right. So you ain't listening, to, you know, you're just doing all this. And you know, I just realized he's sitting over in the corner looking like Jesus, okay? And I'm like, crazy, <laughs> over here. No, I, we literally say that all the time. I feel like I'm here, and you know, a lot of time he's here. So yeah, we can definitely relate to that. But I, I realize also being silent, not saying anything, is also a way of controlling. Yeah. 
because mm -hmm. you know, and I, I I didn't know what to do with that. And it took a minute to work it out, but I think y'all are on a good yes. roll because you're able to um, talk about it. So yeah. let's stay there a little bit. So okay. how did you really? What really? What was your childhood like? Um, my childhood was very simple. I mean, I didn't really have to ask for much. Um, I normally did what I was told, and naturally, I didn't feel like I really had to express my needs outwardly because, you know, I was doing my homework, doing my chores. So, so you like, was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. he was. And um, it didn't really dawn on me until I became an adult. I realized, like, I can't keep these emotions bottled up because at mm -hmm. some point in time, I'm just it's just going to come out in a way where it's not intended to be expressed. And mm -hmm. I feel like she deserves um, to know what's going on with me on every day. That's basis. good. Now, mm -hmm. how, what made you get to that point for our listening audience? Because there's a lot of people that are stuck there and they don't really know how to get out of it. And so what they do is just forget it. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. we don't go no further. Um, I would you know, say it took a lot of self reflection. I had to really, yeah, I had to really look at myself and see like what I was missing and what I needed versus what she needed from me as a partner. Oh. Yeah. So, um, and what did you have to say about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's definitely, it's been a work in progress. Um, and it's funny because I feel like our daughter has kind of taken that kind of personality trait from him as well, kind of just like sometimes shutting down and mm -hmm. going quiet instead of like expressing. So it's funny how it does trickle down. And I think that was one of the things that really also motivated him and pushed him because when you see that <clears throat> character trait in your little one and you're seeing how that manifests and what that looks like, it really makes you realize like, oh, this is, she's picking this up from me. Mm -hmm. like. She's seeing me shut down and not saying how I feel and not expressing myself just, you know, to kind of appease others and for the peace. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know if you would admit that that was a reason, but I, I do believe that is another reason. Um, but I, was, I feel like since things have been getting better with his communication on how he feels, I feel like the dynamic overall has really just gotten better because... He, he really is the leader in our relationship mm -hmm. where when he starts to work on something, I feel like it, it just trickles down to all of us. So, yeah. So how difficult is that for you mm -hmm. to allow him to be the leader and make some decisions? Right. With having control issues. Right? Giving yes. up control. Yeah. So, and it's crazy because I think them two things really, they, they <laughs> go hand in hand in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but... <laughs> I think for me, I really just had to figure out, like, where is this, where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. Like, why do you feel the need to always want to be in control? Why do you always feel the need to... So you were self-reflecting as well. Exactly. And I, I realized that mine really came from fear. Mm -hmm. Like, just fear of failing, disappointing the people around me, mm -hmm. you know, just feeling sometimes of, like, the perception, just all these different types of fears. And... Once I was able to kind of vocalize that and he was able to reassure me in that consistent kind of reassurance, I feel like it kind of opened up a, a door for me to be able to let go a little bit and mm -hmm. to put a little more trust in him to handle things like, okay, you don't have to <laughs> cook the meal, clean the house. You don't have to do everything because you want it a certain way. You know, it's okay. This may, this may not turn out the best meal. That's okay. No, no. <laughs> no, no, that's so true. It's just certain she likes things done a certain way, and it's just kind of difficult trying to be in the mind of a person that wants something a way that that they want it done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. We, no, no, this is good. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, um, I feel like it's easier to navigate when you know it comes from a place of expectation and not a place of like ruling or mm -hmm. setting ruling with the iron fist so to speak yeah it's out of love right yeah <laughs> well she's she's very <laughs> intense emotionally so it's like when she wants something done she'll let you know in a way that's like okay, maybe i should have you know <laughs> took it more into consideration 
what she wanted in that moment. Yeah. Now, you know, an issue that um, that we uh, had was uh, he's slow by nature. Oh, my goodness. And I want to think of right now. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if it would be a fire and I would be hollering, it's a fire, hurry up, run out. He would be saying, okay, you go to this side, left, this side, right. We're going to go out this way, you know. And that's just the way it is. So yeah. that would happen all the time. You know, we'd paint a room together. And I would love to do that in the sun. We was going to paint together, being together. And I would be ready to start painting. He would mm -hmm. have the masking tape. First, it had to go around <laughs> everything. Then he had to get his drink, what he was going to drink while he was painting. Then the music had to come on. <laughs> and so by the time he got everything set up, I done painted my yeah, wall. wall and now I got an attitude. But guess what? Mm -hmm. Now I got to take the rag and go around and try to wipe where I didn't put any. Thing mm -hmm. down where I didn't do any protective type thing. And all he got to do is just pull his off and. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, you know, we had to learn how yeah. to balance that. Yeah. Because I'm more or less had to laugh. And people think, well, if you're loud anyway, he's he soft. You yeah. Know, you know, that you're in control. That's not necessarily true. Yeah. But in our case, I'm loud. And I, I'm, right. I'm, I'm trying to do better. It's too late. But different little things. Mm -hmm. wow. So now let me ask you this. You said that uh, you had lived together before the marriage. Now, mm -hmm. did what made it different? Did anything oh, yes. make a difference? How is it different? Yes, yeah, uh, it was a big difference. Um, for the most part, we have to operate more as a unit yeah. than just people that are co living together. Because, like, Literally everything we do in life is combined. So it's kind of trying to find that balance to where, you know, we're not bringing, putting too much of ourselves onto one person and then basically leaving them to go to where we can come to a compromise. I love yeah. that. So it now became like the one on one. Yeah. Flesh in my flesh. Bone on my bone. <laughs> <laughs> because before we moved in together, um, we did live separately for about half of our relationship. And it wasn't until we really, marriage came a topic. And we're like, okay, we need to try out, a, try and live it together for a year, see how it goes. We'll find a year lease. And I would say like that year, it was a good year. I mean, it was an adjustment for sure, being in each other's space, learning each other really. But um, after that year, I think it really let us know like, okay, we can do this. Like, this is for life. We can, we can make this work. But yeah, it was definitely an adjustment. Okay. So, go ahead. And it honestly it was an eye opener because you don't really know your person until you live with them. Yeah. And see their tendencies every day and see the sides that you don't normally see when you're apart. So, um, I feel like it helped us learn each other a little better. Yeah. So, would you advise that? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not for the faint of heart. Because, I mean, it just depends on your will to maintain your love yeah. for that person based on how they present themselves to you. So. Yeah. And circumstances can sometimes push you forward right. into yeah. uh, situations. Now, I would say if you don't have a plan to get married and you don't plan to do this for forever, I wouldn't just move in with somebody just for <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> but I think if the goal is to be married and the goal is to spend the rest of your life together, then yeah. Okay. So now, um, what has been the um, most difficult thing of adjustment? What's been the hardest thing for you? Hmm. Uh, I'll let you start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the most difficult, I think. Hmm would maybe be like living together or being married? Either. Just in general? Just in general. What's been... That's kind of hard. Let's do marriage. Yeah. Let's do marriage. Let's do marriage. Yeah. Okay. Because you did say something about that. That um... uh, it, it's, For me, uh, at least, it's putting your own reservations to the side to where it's like I can't do things my way at this time all the time because it may not work for her or the situation. So I, I would say uh, more so just meeting the person in the middle when you need to be done. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. 
because I think for a while we were kind of operating on different like schedules too. Like he's uh, an early bird, I'm kind of a night owl, and kind of like being able to get on the same schedule too uh, was uh, an adjustment for us mm -hmm. as well. But I think because we became parents before we got married, I think a lot of the hard, hard stuff we had to deal with a little bit early on. So I think by the time we got married, because we were together for seven or eight years before we decided to get married. So I think through that period. Because you didn't have a child all that time. No. Right. So, yeah. But I think through that period, a lot of the hard stuff, we were forced to work through. So by the time we did get married, I think the biggest adjustment was really living together. Mm. Honestly. Okay. So. Where are you at now? <laughs> We've had a year. It's been one year now? Yep, a little over a year. Okay. Did you ever have any type of uh, counseling for the different things that you were going through? Um, we did do premarital counseling before we got married, which was nice. Um, did you have any form of like separate counseling? Uh, no, I didn't have any counseling. Yeah, so premarital counseling was really helpful yeah. for Mm -hmm. counseling. And that was still different. Once you live together, it's a little different. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It's yeah. more so solidified. Like it just feels more concrete. Like it yeah. can't just like crumble at any given point mm -hmm. or any given day. And of course you do realize you jumped into God's plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got and you know what? We felt that. I mean the blessings were just coming. We got a new car. We moved into a house. I mean it was like God, we're like, okay, God, we're going to honor you and we're going to follow through and get married. And he showed up and showed out the first year. <laughs> hey, God. <laughs> Listen, yeah. And I feel like now, especially the past few months, like after our one year, we really have been able to like sit in marriage and enjoy it. That first year was mm -hmm. kind of like a little touch and go because it was different. I feel like it was a, a little bit of pressure. Like, okay, we're married now. Like, what's next? Like, you know, what's so different? And it really wasn't much difference, but I do feel like we were a little more aware of each other, mm -hmm. a little more just like. <laughs> we had definitely had to be more open in a way that is beneficial to our marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because um, after a while, I really, we both had to really reflect on ourselves and like, okay, is this the person I need to be for my person for this to work? Yeah. So it took a lot of growing pains, a lot of growing up, uh, yeah. a lot of back and forth mm -hmm. um, about our opinions towards certain things. But I feel like it helped us in the long run. Yeah. Because so, for a while we were growing separately. Mm -hmm. And I think once we decided, okay, we're going to do this marriage thing, we're really going to stay forever. Mm -hmm. We then started growing together. And that was a different type of growth and adjusting to that togetherness. That was that was difficult in the beginning, but I do feel like it's getting better, and I feel like more time is going to keep getting better. I already feel like it's getting better. So you're taking time to think about one another, not right. to your partner more than just well, how this going to benefit me, but how this is going to affect us. Yeah, you know? yeah. So now you grew up in a Christian home. Yeah. Did you? Oh uh, yeah, my grandma was definitely a God fearing woman, and mm -hmm. she instilled in me the morals of person and how to love someone through the light of God. So you have been able to incorporate God more in since the marriage? Is that fair yeah, to say that? Okay. It is. And I think that is actually really important. Like me saying like, hey, I want us to start going to church. Him just being like, okay, let's do it. That's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. To not have to fight to want to go to church, to not have to fight to want to pray. He's reminding me like, we got to pray. We got to. Mm. So having a partner like that that holds you accountable in your relationship with, with God, man, that's something that I never knew that I, I wanted. Mm -hmm. Not until recently. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm blessed. I feel so blessed to have a partner who has a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Not only is a Christian or grew up in a, you know, a mm -hmm. Christ, a Christian home, but has a relationship with God. You yeah, invest. I don't know if you realize the impact of what you're yes. putting out yeah. by saying what you're saying. Yeah. So you're saying God did make the difference. Yeah. Yeah. It made yeah. a big difference in our lives because it really made us realize that he had to be at the forefront for this to even work in general. So just 
being mindful of our connection to God, even when, you know, we may be at odds about a certain subject. It's like God is putting this obstacle in our faces for us to, you know, get through it. Because everything is just not going to be easy. Yeah. And I think that's also what keeps us at bay. Like when we are fighting or if something is wrong, we're not taking it to this level. We're not disrespecting each other. We're not because, like he said, God is at the forefront of our marriage. Mm -hmm. So when things get bad, hey, that's the first thing that we think of. For sure. And that's good for your child also to experience that. Seeing that you guys, what you're going through, that helps her. Yeah. Yeah. But she reminds me to pray too. <laughs> She's like, Mom, put your phone down. We need to pray before we eat. <laughs> wow. Well, now, um, is there anything else before I ask you this? I'm going to ask you to what you would like to say to our listening audience. <laughs> but, uh, viewing audience, baby. Uh, our viewing audience. Our viewing audience. That's right. <laughs> um, um, but before I ask you to come up with that, is there any one certain thing that we might have left off that you think we should include? So we didn't ask for you, my time. You said, oh, I wish I don't think so. I, well, I guess something that I could mention is there's not, there's not a lot of young people that are married. I think a lot of young people are fearful of marriage. <laughs> and I think what I want to say is don't be scared. Like, if you and another person are moving in together, having kids together, living together, doing all these things together. Think about getting married. Think about honoring God and, and you know, taking that step because it's hard, but it's no harder than a lot of the other things that we put ourselves through anyway. And the benefits and the blessings that come from it, it's just, it's unmatched. Mm. Uh, I'm going to add on to that. Uh, <laughs> definitely love your person the way they intend to be love not the way you expect them to be loved because if you place your expectation of how they want to be loved it's just not going to match um their sense of affection that they need from you now say yeah. that again yeah. <laughs> your, all right to put it in short love your person the way they need to be loved and not you the way you want them to be loved yeah. the way that what they need you want yeah. to meet their needs Wow. Uh, that's good. Can I can I borrow that? <laughs> so, what advice, each of you, mm-hmm. what advice would you give to? Well, we already gave a big piece. I know right there. that was probably right it. But yeah. to our viewers, like to piggyback off of what he said, learn your partner's love language. Figure out what it is that they need and what they like and what they want and try to love them that way instead of like he said the way that you want to love them or the way you feel like they need to be loved um uh, to add i would say um definitely be more emotionally aware you know Mm -hmm. check in with yourself more than you should because if you're not right within you really can't give someone the proper love that they need oh that's good yeah (laughs) Great. Well, um, we are so grateful that you decided to uh, agree to be a part of this. And uh, I think this is good because you haven't been married but a year. Yeah. And I think it's good for our audience to see they're only in it a year and they're already here on this type of yeah. subject, dealing with this stuff because sometimes this goes on forever. Right. And it never gets resolved. Mm-hmm. And um, asking the other person, what is it is? What is it that you want from me? Yeah. You know, and what is it that you feel? And allowing each other to get what they need by communicating that helps that helps a whole lot. Yeah. You know, from mm-hmm. from feeling and touching to food. You know, like he mm-hmm. told me years yeah. later. I don't know why you always fix in nasty little cabbages. <laughs> that caught my brother sprout. <laughs> I said, you ain't like it. No, I ain't like them all this time. We yeah. love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> but yeah, all the music was putting up. Right, right, right. Loved you. I don't care what area it is. It's yes. good to talk about, you know, what yeah, you like. The small you. stuff and the big stuff. Right, sure. right, right, right. <laughs> now, I'll put you on the spot. Uh-oh. Yes. I'd like you to propose out a prayer for our, our audience. Again, either of you or both of you. Okay. As you feel. Okay. okay. Thank you.
You can start. Dear God, we come to you today and just ask that you bless the people, the viewers, with the love that we were fortunate enough to come across. I just ask that you guide them and give them the proper answers that they need to seek this love because we are all deserving of this kind of love in the light of this. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to be here today and opening up this opportunity to speak and um, let so many people hear our story. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you will continue to do for us, Lord. And we are grateful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 This is so great. Yes, <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yes. And uh, we are flesh in my flesh and, and bone of my bone. <laughs>